Hey there guys, it's Tina and I'm back. And I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. And every now and then we mix it up with some vlog type content or just a chatty video. So if that sounds interesting to you, please go ahead and join the fancy fam. And like I mentioned, sometimes we mix it up and today's video is going to be one of those mixy days, okay? I am really feeling the spirit of Vlogmas where you can post whatever content you feel like posting as long as you have fun with it and it doesn't need to follow the usual structure, format, or even fit into the niche of your channel. And that's what we're doing today. So I'm gonna share somewhat of a moving vlog with you guys that has been long overdue since the summertime. For those of you who are new here or maybe you're just not aware, I moved from New York to sunny South Florida. So I am finally experiencing a North America winter where I'm not freezing my ass off. And it is the best move that I have ever made because now I am back in my tropical element and I can wear shorts all year round. I am so happy with my move, guys. And I filmed various clips of me packing my makeup. I even did a walkthrough of my old apartment in New York, so you'll be able to see that as well. And then when I arrived in Florida, I went ahead and filmed me unpacking my makeup. Now, the backward thing about it is that I already filmed like my final setup after everything was in its place. So if you wanna see that video, check it out over here. So I did that like way back when, but I never actually showed you the packing and moving process. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so first things first, moving is quite stressful, okay? And I had to pack my entire apartment by myself because my mom had already moved and I really didn't have a lot of help to pack. So I had to do it on my own and I did it over a period of two weeks and I also hired movers that would do some of the packing for me so I didn't have to pack like my large pieces of furniture. They came and they wrapped them and packed them for me and I found my movers online. The moving company that I used, I would not recommend them and honestly, I would not recommend any moving company because they're very expensive. They're going to give you a quoted price that you think is all hunky-dory until the movers get to your place and then the price all of a sudden goes up $1,000. I ended up spending about $6,000 just in moving costs to get myself down here to Florida. That included the movers that I also paid to pack some of my items. They included the packing supplies, right? and then they unpacked as well. So a lot of that was off my shoulders, which I don't mind paying for. And a lot of labor did go into packing, but let me tell you right now, I was definitely overcharged, okay? So shop around, get the best price that you can. If you can do it by yourself with the help of friends and family, that's probably the best option because the amount of money I spent irks me to this day. Mind you, mind you, I didn't move with a couch, so there was no bulky living room furniture, and I didn't move with my bedroom furniture, okay? So imagine that there was no bed, there was no dresser, there was no chest of drawers, there were no nightstands, nothing, and I still ended up spending that much for a moving company to move me from New York to Florida. But I have to also factor in like it's across state lines, it's a long journey, all right, whatever. I will take the L on that, right? But if I can recommend anything to you guys is to shop around for moving companies. And if you can manage it, probably try to do it yourself with the help of friends and family. You can still hire movers to do some of the heavy lifting, but if you can pack and do that all on your own, do that. But at the end of the day, I was very happy to have the movers at the same time. So even though I was overcharged, I understand it and I'm happy I didn't have to do it, all right? Because it was a lot of packing and they spent hours and hours packing. And the kicker is I tipped the people that actually did the moving. So what I did, I found like a moving website online 
and I reached out to them and they quoted me a price. Then what they do is reach out to local moving companies and offer them that actual project, right? So they offer them my little contract to move me based on whatever we discussed and the quoted price that they gave them. And then that moving company, that local company, reserves your date, reserves the truck, the space in the truck, right? And they send the movers, they pack you and everything. And then it's almost like another company takes over the actual move. So from New York to Florida. And then after that, that company unpacks you. So it's like a lot of moving parts, there are a lot of people involved and everybody needs to take their cut. So I get it, I get it, but it was just, it wasn't that well done and I didn't appreciate it at all. And I even got a couple of broken pieces and here's the kicker, here's the freaking kicker, okay? The guy that actually came to deliver my items that was a whole mess, okay? First of all, first of all, he was calling somebody else instead of calling me because I gave them a backup number in case I didn't make it down to Florida in time to meet them because there would be a gap of time between when they actually left with my items and when I would actually physically be in Florida to collect them. So there was a backup number. This dude called the backup number instead of calling me directly and that was just a whole fiasco. And when he came, it was raining. So it was a whole situation. And, and he came by himself talking about how he was calling the number and he wasn't getting through to us. And so he went ahead and sent his assistants home. Oh, okay. No, that's not going to work out. So he had the nerve to be like, oh, you guys are going to have to probably help me to move the stuff in. And I'm like, absolutely not. I put my foot down at that point. I was like, you need to go find your assistants, call somebody, you know, find some help somewhere else. Cause I didn't pay thousands of dollars for me to then move my own things inside. Are you crazy? Are you nuts? And then they also want to charge you for the distance. So if they have to go from the parking lot to like behind apartments to move you in, apparently there's like a distance surcharge. And then if they have to go up a level, so I'm on the second floor, if they have to go up a level, they want to charge you for that too. Mind you, that was all covered in my contract because I told them I was on the second floor for both places and they waived that fee in the contract and it's written there and I'm like, I'm not paying anything extra, sir. I don't care what you gotta do, you figure it out. And he was rude as well. He was trying to blame us because he was calling the wrong number, like, what? The initial movers that packed me from New York were great, okay? They overcharged me too, plus got a tip, but they were actually nice, and they did a great job packing and labeling everything. But from the jump, the guy came in, surveyed the apartment, and was telling me, oh, you're gonna need to pay this much extra for this much extra room, like almost $1,000 extra, and I'm like, why? Let's just go with what was quoted and then add after. And he thought he was slick because he still, at the end of it, said, oh, we still have these items left. We packed everything that was on your quoted list, but we still have to pack these, so what do you wanna do? So I had to just approve the extra charge and also tip them, right? The nerve, the freaking nerve. I also drove them out to lunch and then the truck was in the parking lot and the battery was dead. So I had to jump start them. Can you imagine? Like it was a whole fiasco. It was a whole thing, okay? But the guy came, unpacked everything by himself and I didn't tip him. I didn't care at that point. He was rude, he was obnoxious, like he was giving attitude nonstop and then telling me I have to move my own stuff like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I was not having it, I was too through. And when he was done, he threw the paperwork at me. Like this is before we even wrapped up, like he didn't know if I was gonna tip him or not. He's just like throwing down the paperwork, talking about, oh, you gotta sign this to say you received it. I'm like, I can't sign it because nothing's unpacked. You're supposed to unpack, but you didn't unpack. I have to unpack and I have to go through everything to make sure I got everything. So I'm not gonna sign to say I received everything. He caught an attitude and threw the paperwork at me. I didn't sign anything and he stormed off. So it's like, all right, then whatever, sir. So definitely don't recommend that moving company, but okay. I, <sighs> I just had to vent for a little bit cause that was annoying as hell, okay? Annoying as hell. But let me go ahead and show you how I actually
actually packed my makeup. So the big items like these drawers behind me and everything, my desk and everything, that was wrapped and packed by the move-in company, thankfully, but I had to like pack the actual makeup. They also packed my kitchen and my closet. Like I didn't have to do any of that, thank God, but I still had to pack like my linen closet and any of my backup items. I had to pack my bathroom and then the makeup. The makeup was like the big thing. So. The best thing I can recommend for anyone that's moving and you're moving with makeup is to get honeycomb paper wrap, okay? This saved me. It's so much better than bubble wrap. I had some bubble wrap. So over the couple of months that I was planning the move and everything, I was collecting boxes from deliveries, any bubble wrap that they had in those boxes. I would like save it. So I had extra boxes from packages and stuff that I had delivered months before. So I was saving boxes. My uncle also gave me boxes. He worked at Pepsi, so he was able to get some of their moving boxes, which were huge boxes, and I was able to get some of those to pack my items. You can also get boxes at Home Depot. So if you need TV boxes, which I had to purchase myself, you can get them at Home Depot and they have different size boxes that you can get too. They're a little bit pricey, but they're not as pricey as if you try to get them at like Target or Walmart. They're actually cheaper at Home Depot. So I had all my boxes and I just had to like wrap and secure everything. So like I said, I got honeycomb paper wrap and I got this off of Amazon. I will link the exact one that I got down below and it was perfect. I got two rolls of the one I picked up and I didn't need the two rolls. In fact, I could have done with just the one, but I got two rolls just as backup. So these rolls go a really long way. It's 135 feet and they're nine by eight inches wide. So you have a pretty decent roll to go through, but it's like really thin, it's paper, it's recyclable. So it was better for the environment. And again, it was so much better than bubble wrap. So I went through my drawers, I took out all my palettes and I wrapped them in this honeycomb paper wrap. And this was so easy to do. I just stacked my palettes on the paper, did one roll, put another palette, did another roll, and just kept doing that until I had like a decent stack. And with the honeycomb wrapping paper, it's easy to tear by hand. You don't need scissors, but I went ahead and grabbed my scissors. It was just easier for me to use the scissors instead of ripping the paper, but you can definitely do this without any tools. You can rip the paper by hand. And then I tucked it into my boxes. Like I said, I had bubble wrap material and like bubble packing material that I could use to like fill out the rest of the boxes. And this was so easy. It was a lot easier than I anticipated and I am so happy I packed this way. So if you have to pack palettes, this is an easy way to do it. And another great tip I can give you about moving with makeup is to make sure everything is nice and snug and secure. Things will break if they're able to rattle around, but if you pack everything tightly so there's no movement, no shaking, no shuffling, then you're less likely to get any damage. And none of my makeup was damaged during this move. So I really did a great job at packing and this is exactly how I would pack again for my next move into my house because I'm not moving into another apartment, okay? It's a house or bust. I don't know what to tell you. And I secured all my boxes with masking tape. And masking tape is so much easier to use than say cellophane tape because you can rip it by hand. There's no must, there's no fuss. It's not overly sticky, but it still holds your boxes tight and secure. And you're able to write on it. So I went ahead and just labeled all my boxes with what was inside of them. And because I use drawer systems to organize my makeup, I just label them by what drawer they were in. So if it's like the top drawer, the middle drawer, the bottom drawer, and I labeled what was in them, if it was makeup palettes, if it was face palettes, if it was lipstick, nail polish, all that, and it was easy to write directly on the masking tape. Now when it came down to packing my acrylic drawers, 
this again was a lot easier than I had anticipated, especially for lip products. So like I said, right, I packed everything really tightly, really snugly. So with my lip products, I just used the honeycomb paper, laid it out in the bottom of my acrylic drawer, and then packed the lip products back into the acrylic drawer and added any extra honeycomb paper around it to make sure everything was secure. Then I slid it back into the drawer and sealed it with my masking tape again. That held everything in place and I was able to just stack those acrylic drawers inside cardboard boxes for easy travel. Again, that was so easy to do and it really cut down on the amount of time I spent wrapping products. I did not need to wrap each of my lipsticks individually. I just went ahead and tucked them in, made sure everything fit nice and snugly before actually putting them in the boxes. Now for some of the larger drawers that had way too many products that would definitely jiggle around, I packed them in makeup bags. So I have these cube makeup bags that you can travel with that I use to store my lip products. And I packed these similar to how I packed the acrylic drawers. I just used the honeycomb paper to line the bags, tuck the lipsticks in, added layers of honeycomb paper to give it cushion in, and just packed it really tightly with the products and then stacked them in the boxes as well. And I just kept going until all these little doodads were nicely packed away. Now, like I mentioned, I also had some bubble wrap from packages that I had delivered that I had saved, and they came in really handy because some of them were in the shape of bags. So I was able to put my single eyeshadows and like my single face compacts in these bags and then pack them into a box that was lined with paper again that I'm kind of reusing from previous deliveries and this again worked like a charm I didn't have to do too much to pack these I didn't wrap each thing individually I just put them in these bubble wrap baggies and just pack them really snugly in a smaller box so they wouldn't have any space to again rattle around and that worked like a charm. Now for my more fragile face compacts, like my highlighters from Becca, they were in these acrylic drawers as well. I wrapped these a little bit more carefully in the honeycomb paper. So I wrapped them either as singles in twos or threes with that honeycomb paper. And again, kind of stacked them snugly into the acrylic drawers and taped the drawers shut. And I just kept adding honeycomb paper in any gaps to reduce any shaking or rattling around of those products again. And this worked out really well. I even packed some of my cardboard face palettes in between some of the drawers and the boxes. It was kind of like playing Tetris and just making sure everything fit just so and perfectly with each other. So again, we didn't have any empty space for these products to go shifting around. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I kind of had fun packing my makeup. I got to go through all my products, not like individually, but I got to see all my makeup and I was able to do some like quick decluttering of products that I definitely wasn't taking with me. I did like an overall declutter really quickly, getting rid of expired products, getting rid of products that I definitely wasn't going to use because I didn't want to travel with everything if I wasn't going to use them. I still made it to Florida with products that I got rid of after, but for the most part, I got rid of a bulk of products before I actually moved. Now for my foundations, which are in these glass bottles. These are probably the most fragile of all the products in my makeup collection, so I had to wrap them with care. I again got those makeup travel cases that I have, and I use the honeycomb paper to wrap each of these bottles individually. Now, if it was a plastic bottle, like some of these plastic tubes, I just tucked them into the bag. I already had the honeycomb paper line in the bag, so I didn't have to worry too much about them. But for the glass bottles, I wrapped them a couple of times in the honeycomb paper. I just cut them in little strips so I could wrap them snugly. And I also ended up having kind of this foamy packing material that I got in a couple of boxes from Victoria Beckham Beauty that came in the clutch. These were perfect for patting the foundation bags. They worked so well in ensuring that the foundation bottles had like that extra cushion. These were excellent for packing the foundations. Now next up for the fragile items, nail polishes. I kind of did the same thing here with how I packed them. 
I cut strips of the honeycomb paper, wrapped each bottle individually because at this point they're all glass, right? They're all gonna break. So I had to wrap them individually. Some of them I wrapped in, in twos, but mostly I wrapped them individually. And I stacked them in the shoe boxes that I happened to have in my closet. And this worked out perfectly again because it allowed me to pack them snugly. I added layers of brown paper just to make sure nothing went awry. And again, I didn't have any damage to any of my nail polishes. So again, I did a pretty good job with securing these. All right, we are done with packing and most of the items are out of my apartment. This is the final day for me. I am about to hit the road and we're doing the final walkthrough of my apartment. And let me tell you right now, this carpet was a hot mess, not just by me living there, but even just moving, like so many people were back and forth in their boots, not caring. But I didn't have to pay for the carpet because I lived in the apartment for over five years. So they didn't charge me for the carpet. They just ripped it up and replaced it for the new tenants. So that was excellent okay so my apartment was on the second floor everything is carpeted so you go up the stairs and you enter my living room space i had high ceilings because my apartment was a two bedroom two bathroom with a loft so i had higher ceilings and my living room area was a decent size but it wasn't really large but what i liked about the apartment was the amount of windows that i had so i had tons of daylight in the living space I had an overhead fan, again, everything was carpeted, and then the kitchen had these dark wood cabinets that I absolutely loved. I know dark cabinets can kind of close off a kitchen or make an area feel smaller, but I love these dark cabinets, and they were easy to clean. And you know, you have the usual appliances, the microwave, the dishwasher, the refrigerator, the stove. I miss my gas stove. That's the biggest thing I miss from living in New York. We had gas stove for cooking. And what I loved about this kitchen is that I had tons and tons of storage and I also had like a pantry. So I was able to store and stack a lot of things in this kitchen. Now outside of the kitchen, there's this little nook. I call it a little nook because it wasn't really a separate room, but you could have like a dining table there or a bar. What I had there was my bar and towards the end I put my work desk there and I would work from that area so I could look out the window because I didn't want to work from my makeup room. So that's what I use that space for. I also had an entryway closet at the top of the stairs for like coats and whatever. I stored extra shoes in here and board games. Then we have the first bathroom, which is a full bathroom, but it has a smaller shower. I think I can count on one hand how many times I use that bathroom, but it was cute. Like it was a good little guest bathroom for anyone that came over. We also had a linen closet that was a huge linen closet. That again, I miss because I don't have a linen closet here in this apartment, which is shitty. And then I also had like a little laundry room. It was like a little laundry nook that had the washer and dryer, which was perfect. Again, for an apartment in New York to have a washer and dryer, perfect. And it had this really large shelf that I could store all my laundry supplies. This was a really good little nook. Right now, what I have is like a stackable washer and dryer in this little area that I can't store anything else. So I hate that because I'm coming from having all this space to have it limited storage in this new apartment. All right, let me show you now the makeup room, which was the smaller of the two bedrooms. It's a really tiny bedroom. I would never consider this a bedroom, maybe for a child, but for me, it worked out well for a makeup room and there are stains over this carpet. Let me tell you how the worst color of red nail polish dropped on the carpet Carpet and it was a nightmare to clean up. It was just a mess and I have makeup stains all over the floor which is why I now make sure that I have like an extra rug in my room so if any makeup spills it will spill on that rug before it spills on the carpet. I had some large windows in this room which was really nice but I still kept them closed because I like to keep my makeup room a little bit on the dark side and I had a little walk-in closet that listen this was my go-to closet because it had so much storage space my shoes my clothes my coats everything was in this closet and it was stacked to the top okay then into the master bedroom which again is not like a large space but it was big enough to hold a king size bed and a chest of drawers with nightstands so it worked out fine and there's also like a second closet in here not as large but 
thought it still worked out the windows and I had a view of a lake outside don't mind the extra things that are here that are about to be packed into my car for the trip and then here is the master bathroom which was a good size I really like the size of this bathroom I had so much space to put up like storage shelves and all that I really like the size of this bathroom and this bathroom had the tub I really like that bathroom now I'm in a much smaller space the bathroom isn't as big but whatever it's functional I'm not here for a long time I'm just here for a good time all right so now let's go upstairs and show you guys the loft area which I was originally going to use for my makeup space but it didn't have enough natural light and I didn't feel like moving everything up another flight of stairs and thankfully I didn't because who that would have been a whole situation we have the boiler room up here that was nice to have it up and away from everything because you didn't hear it at night but it's a good little storage area too because i packed some like suitcases in there as well but the loft area was a really good space i did a few different things with the loft area at one point we had like a extra bedroom set up there for guests that came over we also used it one time as like a little mini gym even though you probably don't want to have that much weight up there but we had like free weights and stuff up there at one point and then towards the end I just used it for storage nothing was really up there anymore but if somebody came over and needed to stay up there I had a air bed they could have a good time all right and it had a nice view of the living room and that's it that's the upstairs loft and I'll walk you out to my balcony which I again didn't use that much because it just faced the courtyard and I didn't want to look at people so I didn't really go out here anyway but I did use it for grilling I did have an electric grill out there and here is the quick transition to all my boxes lined up and ready to go like I said the people that initially packed me did a really good job and they complained a bit about the distance and the stairs and whatever but they packed me nice and snugly and then I was on my way now my car was packed to the brim when I tell you I couldn't see out of any windows it wasn't to the point where it was dangerous but my car was so packed up I had bags everywhere the passenger seat was full but I knew I wasn't gonna do like the full 20 plus hour drive to Florida so I was a little bit more comfortable and I'm a good driver by the way so pat myself on the back we have a lot going on I can't see out the rear mirror obviously but I do have my side mirrors they're completely clear and I'm only pulling into spots that I can pull forward out of rather than having to back up even though I'm pretty good at backing up with my mirrors all right pat myself on the back but yeah I am on my way to my new home in Florida and it's a lot of stuff and I had movers and I still have a lot of stuff so what I did in this case was drive from New York to Virginia where I jumped on the Amtrak car train okay so Amtrak has this auto train that runs from Lorton Virginia to Sanford Florida which is North Florida so I drove my little butt to Lorton Virginia and the train departed at 3 p.m. but you had to get there at 2 p.m. if you had a car and so I drove my little self early in the morning to Virginia I think the ride was about four hours give or take probably between three and a half to five hours I took my time I was very careful again I had a loaded car so I couldn't go fast anyway and it was a decent little drive there wasn't any traffic it was very comfortable headed over so I left at about 9 9 30 in the morning there was some New York traffic in Brooklyn and Queens and stuff but I made it to Virginia by 1.30 to get my car on the train and I had VIP car access which means my car would get unloaded within the first 15 minutes after we got to Florida and I needed that okay I wasn't gonna sit around and wait for my car and it wasn't like an excessive fee to do that so I just tacked that onto my ticket my ticket ended up being around six hundred and something dollars because I paid for a roomette so you can get a room on the train with like a, a bed and stuff and you can sleep because it's a full day trip it's an 18 hour train ride and it goes overnight so you're going to want to sleep you can get the regular seats that you just sit up but I wasn't comfortable doing that okay I needed to lay out you can get the room with the bed or you can 
can get a roomette which has like a little pull out bed which is all I need it was just me and I didn't want to pay the extra money for the actual full room I was comfortable where I was they also have like communal showers so you can shower you can brush your teeth you get breakfast as well as dinner like dinner is served at your room they take your order everything so it was a very comfortable ride it wasn't like flying at all because obviously you're on a train so you're gonna feel the shaking and it's gonna be a little bit louder so I just had my noise canceling headphones on with my eye mask and I had a comfortable sleep child I was tired by then anyway because the last couple of days of packing was like stressful it was tiring I was up all night like I barely got any sleep I was bruised all over I was aching I was tired so I slept okay I slept like a bug and I got up I had my water shoes to take a shower because I learned my lesson I do not shower barefoot in these showers no ma'am but I had a decent little shower it's like a little stall it's like nothing fancy but I had a quick shower got my breakfast the dinner was delicious the food was actually pretty good considering and I was comfortable I also brought my own snacks and drinks like to have overnight I had a book to read I had YouTube to listen to like I downloaded so many videos I was set for the night and like I said I was tired so I went to sleep anyway and then we got to Sanford Florida mm, early-ish like um 11-ish in the morning so it was really convenient because now you have the whole day to get to your destination like I said my cars was one of the first ones to actually deboard which was pff, excellent all right and I jumped in and I was on my way here's the thing okay I stopped to get a pedicure because like I said I was busted I was hurting and I just wanted to get a foot massage <laughs> I really wanted to and my nails were looking horrendous by this time because all I was doing was packing and moving things I was like I was looking busted so I got a pedicure and it is one of the best pedicures I've ever had like I would go back to that place if it wasn't so far away but the pedicure was excellent and it was so cheap I also got a manicure just a clear gel coat because my nails were all broken it was a mess but I was gonna put on like fake nails once I got to Florida but I needed something to save my nails at that point because they were getting painful too oh my nails are thin under these fake nails so it was a whole situation but I got like a little relaxing mani and pedi and I had some pretty good lunch and I of course had to use the restroom before I finished up my drive to South Florida and that drive was not that bad either it was a comfortable cruise all the way to South Florida there was some rain at the end that had me kind of oh what's going on there was some heavy rain but like I stopped along the way used the restroom again at rest stops and even got some Popeyes and I got some fresh fried chicken like they made it fresh and I ooh, child that was delicious all right and then I made it to Florida welcome to the sunshine state and I already walked you through the unpacking fiasco but my new apartment is smaller the living room space is a little bit bigger but it's awkwardly laid out and it's just a smaller space I have to do with less storage space and I don't really like that I'm paying more in rent but I have a water view so it is what it is I'm in the climate that I want to be in I'm around family and I just feel a little bit more at home so here's the before of all the boxes laid out in this room and we will now walk you through my unpacking Woo, guys I made it and here is my new office and makeup area yeah we have a lot going on and I need to organize and get everything situated so I already set up my office right here so what I'm gonna do is have my office space set up for work actual work then I have my little desk here which is going to be for YouTube and I have them set up along the same wall which I think will work out pretty well and I can also use this area for editing because those screens will work with my MacBook so okay here's the thing you're probably wondering why the screens look different this one here doesn't match up so I actually purchased the second one of this to put here so they'll match I don't 
care that they're mismatched, but I fell in love with that monitor, so I wanted to get a second one. Anyway, that's how it's gonna look, and it's pretty simple. My desk there is from Mike. It's from Ikea, and I really like it because you see those shelves over there? They're really great for stacking different products on books or drawers or whatever items you want. So it's like additional storage without having to get a separate piece. So I really like that. And then that desk right there that I'll use for my vanity and for filming is my Alex desk, which works out. And I know it's like cliche. All the beauty influencers on YouTube have IKEA furniture. Listen, if it works, it works. And I like having white furniture and you know, whatever, just mind your business. It's fine. You can add personal touches if you want to but I like having all white. So we have that on that side. In this area, oop, in this area right over there, that is a passageway to the bathroom and we have two closets on either side. I won't be using those for makeup because I have enough storage over here. So let me move so you can see the other side. So here we go. We have my Gallant drawer system. I love these drawers. They're deep. They're wide. They hold a lot of makeup and they're really heavy duty Kind of expensive, but they work for what I need them to work for and then I have as usual my acrylic organizers on top Look at the painting that I want to put up in the back I'm not too sure if that's gonna work out or if it's just gonna be too loud and clashy but we'll see and then I have some space over here and on the door I have an acrylic organizer. This is from the container store. I'll link everything down below as much as I can remember. But yeah, I just have that on the door so I'll store some products there. I have a mirror here and my lamp. Listen, the lamp is from Walmart and I'm not gonna go overboard with lighting in here because as you can see I have a pretty large mirror that has great sunlight and the sunlight is afternoon and evening sunlight so that's gonna work out great for me I don't have to do too much lighting if I do filming like mid-afternoon later evening so I'll be happy with that plus I have as you can see my glam core light sets that I'll put up but yeah I have a little organizer too over there in the corner that we'll get to but for right now I wanted to show you guys what we got going on and I need to empty all these boxes do you see what's going on oh my god so I need to empty these put my rug down organize the drawers again put my acrylic drawers back up and figure out what's going on so I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride for some of it not all but we're gonna jump into organizing my acrylic drawers which I shipped just like that right you see the tape around them that's how I shipped them so that they wouldn't open up. And you already saw how I wrapped like the delicate pieces in them and it worked out really great. So far, nothing's broken. I had a little spillage with this drawer here. We have glitter in there. I had a little spillage, but I cleaned that out. So now we're gonna go ahead and try to organize the rest. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the great thing about how I packed is that I labeled all my boxes with where they go. So for instance, this box says, ooh, let me show you, eyeshadow palettes large and it says fourth drawer. So I know it goes in the fourth drawer here. So. All these boxes have acrylic organizers and like palettes and pigments and single eyeshadows. So what I'm going to do first is unpack all the ones that have the acrylic organizers in them. So I'll just speed through that and show you as I go. gonna let this one ride out and you can watch me unpack like I said the boxes were labeled so it was easy to unpack and put everything in my drawer system
And that's it guys. I unpacked and I'm safely in Florida. It's been months now, but I still wanted to share this moving and packing video with you guys. So I could probably give you some tips and tricks. You could learn some lessons from me if you're also moving or you're moving across state. It is a headache. It was stressful and I was so stressed out that my period was three weeks late. Yep. And I knew I wasn't pregnant, okay, so mind your business. I just knew it was all because of stress. And I'm not really a person that gets stressed out easily, but moving, listen, okay, I'm just happy it's over with and I'm here in my new space. So again, if you want to check out what everything looks like at the end, check out the video that I mentioned down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, it was just something that's in the spirit of Vlogmas because we're wrapping up the year and I'm getting this older content out and I didn't want to finish up the year without showing you how I packed and how I moved and kind of walk you through my trip to Florida because I learned some things along the way and I figured I could share those tips and tricks with you as well as give you a little bit of a story time. So there you have it. Whew! I'm gonna leave links to my Instagram and Twitter where you can follow me along and until my next video, which will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye guys!